Couch Chats is a series of real, open, honest and raw chats with some inspiring friends and women I have had the privilege to meet along my entrepreneurial journey. So I wanted to share these casual interview chats with you all to leave you feeling empowered and inspired. I am your host, Jess Williamson, a serial entrepreneur and business coach. And today is actually a solo episode sharing all my mindset tips with you guys. I've recently shared this in my free challenge, so you might hear a few references to that. But I wanted to share this one for all of you who missed out or who want a refresher because the comments and messages that I received after this lesson really, really made such an impact on so many amazing women. And I hope this can really help you as well. Please don't forget to screenshot this podcast and share to your social media. Don't forget to tag me so I can reshare the love at Jess. Dot Williamson 8 and I hope you get so much out of this episode. Let's get started. So why mindset? I know I've seen a couple of comments and a few messages in here saying, you know, I want to jump straight into learning marketing. I want to learn about influencers. I want to learn about Instagram. The thing is, if I come on and give you all the strategies in the world that will give you success, If your mindset isn't right or, you know, if you haven't overcome that mindset block or that challenge that is getting in your way, you actually won't implement those strategies. You won't do what you know you want to do. That's the reason why so many people talk about their dreams so often and they never actually go out and do them because of mindset. And mindset comes in so many different forms and, you know, it's not just a one fix, you know, let's fix your mindset. Let's listen to Jess for an hour and we can go out and tackle everything because you might fix your mindset block here. You grow, grow, grow. And then there's another one here. So that's why I'm going to give you guys these tips today to really get you going um, and get you on the path to success so that you can really implement all of the next four days of lessons. So, you know, you'll be able to handle challenges a lot better. You'll be able to have less stress. And that is something that was really a big thing for me. I would stress out so much that I would cry. I would have breakdowns. You know, things don't always go to plan. And running businesses is not easy. Um, Trust me. And, you know, I'm sure you guys have all had your own challenges as well. But when you have that mindset and that strong, um, you know, framework, you will be able to overcome it. So that's why we're starting here. Um, It really has been the key to a lot of my successes. One great thing that I did was, you know, in the beginning, I didn't notice it, but I was 22. I did not have much fear. I knew I was capable of it and I went out and did it. And now that I look back, I'm actually able to see, okay, Now I can unpack what I actually did and it all started with mindset for me. So having no limits on what you can dream and this is something I teach to my clients all the time and I can see some at the commenting in here. Um, This is something I teach all of the time is not having any limits. Honestly, anything is possible. How else do you think someone with no experience in the fashion industry, no experience in business or anything was invited to New York Fashion Week after just one week in business? Really? Anything is possible. So, you know, you can say yes and figure it out later. Um, I've done a lot of personal development and growth over the past few years, plus just you know, having my own challenges and getting through them each time it makes you stronger. So if you are going through a challenge right now, if you are feeling stressed or under a lot of pressure, it will, you will come out the other end a lot stronger. So just remember that. Um, you know, when you step outside of the norm, people will judge you. When I first started my business, I didn't want my name anywhere. I didn't put my name on my website. I didn't put my name on my social media. I knew that I could build a really, really successful business and I was so proud of it. But for some reason, 
I didn't want anyone to know who was behind it because, you know, when I look back, I didn't realize why I was doing this, but I was worried that people would judge me. People would say, who is Jess to think she can take on the world and run this mess of global business and do fashion? Like she didn't even study fashion. So, you know, that was my own mindset blocks that I had in the beginning. And I'm sure you guys all have your own as well. But the first step is actually realizing what you're doing. Um, Quite often, you know, people talk about self-sabotage or, you know, so many different things. And once you realize why you are doing that, you can really come over it and thrive. Honestly, there is so much excitement on the other side of that mindset block. I can't even tell you. So here's where we are today. Um, You know, imagine if you actually believe in yourself. Imagine if you could go out there and just promote yourself shamelessly. And honestly, that's what I do these days. That's how, you know, 150 of you are here in this group because I put my ego aside. I put my, you know, self-confidence aside. And the point is I'm here to help others. And if I don't believe in myself and if I don't promote myself, then how can I help everyone else? And The reason why you guys are all in business is because you want to help others or your product or service help people in some way. Even if it is fashion, you know, it helps people feel confident. Um, There's so many different reasons, but, you know, have a think about what could really happen if you believe in yourself, start to talk about yourself in a positive light, you know, you you will be judged. And, you know, I've had friends and I've had people look at me and think, why, why does Jess get to do this? And the reason is because I got out of my own way. Um, and that's really the first step. And people will compare you. People will say things that might not be very nice. If you haven't got any hate yet, just wait. It is coming. The bigger you get, the more it comes your way. But just get ready for it because, you know, it is coming and it's not just you. You might feel like you're the only person going through this, but it is, you know, it's just something that happens when you step out of the norm. And that's what you guys are doing right here today is stepping outside the norm. You guys are showing up, you guys are ready to learn. And I am so, so pumped to have you all here. So you actually have to believe in yourself before others will. Um, And it's kind of that thing, you know, fake it until you make it. But the thing is, you're not actually faking it. You might have to trick your brain a few times in the beginning and just say, I am confident. I can do this. You know, I am powerful. I know what I'm doing. I am so capable. And going through those sort of things does trick your brain a little bit. And I I like to call that the fake it till you make it because you're actually tricking your brain. You're showing up more confident. You're telling yourself and you're believing that in yourself. And then others start to believe it as well. So it's kind of like magic, but it really does work. Awesome. I can see some of your comments coming through. This is what I need help with changing my mindset to get out of my comfort zone and believe I can achieve anything. So a hundred percent. This is just exactly why I'm here starting with this today. You know, I love this quote. It's if I am going to be with myself my whole life, then I need to invest in me. We're so quick to maybe help others out and invest in others and do what we can for our families and friends, but you're the one who's going to be with yourself your whole life. So why do we always put investing in ourselves on the back burner? Put that as the second thought. Invest in areas you need to grow. Um, Invest in a cause. Invest in a mentor. Invest in just some time for yourself to recharge. Um, And it's all about priorities. You know, people often say, I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't have this and that. Actually, you do. You know, some people have more, some people have less, but we all actually have the same amount of time in the day. So it's about prioritizing. Where are you spending that time and what is really important to you? So have a think about that as well. I'm just going to give you a quick example of a client. All of my client info is always very confidential. If you are watching, feel free to say, hey, Um, but you know, I'm just going to share this and I won't allude to who it is, but I think it's a really great lesson to learn from this. So 
One of my clients had a dream for many years to start a business and this has been her absolute dream. Um, she had thought about it for so long and we'd actually had a chat um, a few months ago and I could tell she really wanted to do this, but there was something holding her back. And, you know, at that time she actually said, you know what? I'm not going to go ahead with the coaching. Um, I'm just not sure yet. And as a coach, I know that not sure means that there is some sort of fear, some sort of, um, you know, mindset block perhaps. And once we spoke through it a bit more, she actually had a business in the past that didn't go so well. And so the story that she was telling herself was, when I do a business, um, it doesn't end well, or, you know, I'm afraid of success or I'm afraid of failure. There was a few of those, you know, messages coming through. And after a few months of being in my membership, she didn't join up to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, but through those, you know, growth in mindset, she said, look, Jess, let's do it. If I don't do it now, you know, I might not ever do it. So I'm working with her now, you know, just the other day, I think it was Friday, she sent me an email saying, this is the best money I've ever spent because now we're getting to work through all of those mindset blocks. We're going to, you know, make her dream a reality. And this business is coming along faster than ever. So, you know, that is why I'm so, so passionate about mindset because if there wasn't that shift in mindset and there still might be for some things to go through, but if there wasn't that initial shift, she might not be doing this business right now and it would still be that dream in the far distance. Um, so I want to encourage all of you right now to figure out what mindset blocks are you having? Why, you know, why are you self-sabotaging? Why are you not doing something that you know you've always wanted to do? What actually is the backstory? What story are you telling yourself? Because once you rewrite that story into something else, then the world is really full of possibilities and so many opportunities for you. A few mindset blocks. I want you guys to write down some notes if anything triggers for you. I work with a lot of my clients and there are really so many common mindset blocks or challenges that come up. So, you know, fear of failure is one that is so, so prevalent. Um, you know, not wanting to aim too high in case you fail, not wanting to, you know, maybe I'll just tinker a little bit and see if it works and then I'll try a bit more and try a bit more. Well, my question is, why can't we just go straight to here? Um, and the reason why people like to have a practice or a little, you know, trial is because they're scared of failure if they aim too high. Um, not wanting to try something new in case you break what is going well. So you might be ticking along pretty nicely. Um, nothing much is happening, but it's going well. The problem is if you keep going at this pace, you're going to start to go down. So you actually need to break the mold when everything is going well, you need to break it down, rebuild it and, you know, start to build back up. A lot of people have the worry that they don't have the knowledge or they don't have you know, the tools to make it happen. People say they don't have enough time. They don't have enough money. Trust me, I was working full time for the whole first year and somehow I managed to go on a lot of toilet breaks. Um, I went to a lot of appointments and I also managed to get all the way to New York Fashion Week and back without my boss even knowing, you know, it was more of a, a holiday or something. So, you really can make the time is about your priorities. And for me at the time, my priority was not my full-time job. My priority was my business. Um, and I made that work and I still made sure that I did my work at work, but I didn't go over and above, you know, what is the point when, you know, I'm there and I'm showing up and I'm doing what I was required of me, but my real passion and my real area where I wanted to spend the time was in my full-time job. I mean, in my business, not in the full-time job. The same as people say, you know, I don't have money. The thing is, neither did I. You know, I was 22, um, working a very, very minimal wage job. And, you know, I made it work. You know, it's about priorities. I didn't go out as often. I didn't, you know, spend money on going out all the time with my friends on the weekend. Um, I was able to, you know, you can always ask yourself, what do I have to do to make this happen or to make this a reality? There's actually always ways you can 
create wealth. You can create time um, or make the time um, by scheduling it in. I love that a lot of you posted in the group um, yesterday saying, I've scheduled this into my diary, otherwise it wouldn't happen. So if that's what you have to do, um, decide where you want to spend that time and make it happen. Schedule things in. I actually have to now schedule in self-care time. So I'm showing up for you guys this morning, um, but this afternoon I am going to take a little bit of an extra break because I know that I've got to show up for the next five days for you guys. So there is a lot of things that you need to think about when it comes to this. Fear of success is a really, really important one. But fear of success is actually one that people don't actually think is a thing, but fear of success is real and, you know, it is there. So maybe you've been successful in the past and a negative thing happened um, or maybe you've been, you've seen other people successful and it changes them and they've totally changed their their lifestyle. They've forgotten about their family. They've just become a different person. There's so many different reasons why people are, you know, have a fear of success as well. There's also just the fear of getting out of your comfort zone and doing something new, worrying about being judged. Like I said before, um, you might even be thinking, I'm not good at this, or I'm afraid of what people might think, or what if I screw this up? The list could go on forever. And to be honest, if I was worried about any of those things, you know, of fear of failure, I probably wouldn't have gotten to where I am now because I have taken some seriously huge risks um, and, you know, some paid off and some didn't. But the thing is, I didn't sit there dwelling on the times when it didn't pay off. I thought, okay, that didn't work. Let me quickly get on with the next thing. So that's what you guys need to think about as well. Let me know if any of those are sort of resonating with you. There is honestly so many we could go on all day about it. I can see a couple of comments here. That's my biggest struggle, the fear of failure or waiting for it to be perfect. Not feeling qualified enough or not enough experience. So that's something that I think, you know, a lot of people have. Um, for me, I would rather it be done than be perfect. And, you know, in some cases it, it still needs to be quite good. Um, but there's no such thing as perfection. So if we can get things out there, get promoting until you actually start having customers or having traffic, you can't actually start to see what needs improving. So by actually putting something out there that's not perfect, that way you actually get real time feedback because you might think it's perfect, but your customers might not. So just getting something out there that you can actually start getting real time feedback on is really, really important. These things do show up in some form for all of us and, you know, on different levels, but they all are there for sure. So Elena, I have fear of losing family money. <laughs> yeah, this is a common one, um, especially with mums. And I know there's a few mums in the group. This is a common thing that I hear when I speak to, you know, a lot of mums out there. They're they're usually, you know, stay at home mums at the moment or they're on maternity leave and they have this guilt around using their husband's money. You know, even though it's their family money, they have this fear of losing it. But this is what I sort of spoke to my client um, about that I explained earlier is that you will always wonder what if, if you don't give it a try. Um, and, you know, you can calculate a worst case scenario and make sure that, you know, you can have as little risk as possible. But Going out there and learning the skills that you need to, finding a mentor who's been there, done that to help you reduce the risk. Because like I said earlier, I made a lot of mistakes or, you know, I wouldn't even call them mistakes. I had a lot of learnings with trial and error, getting up and quickly doing something else. So I'm able to help my clients now really navigate that. And, you know, when there's a massive investment, if I've been there, done that and it didn't quite work then maybe I can advise them on how to do it differently or maybe just to avoid that in general. So seeking someone that can help you through that journey is really, really great, whether it's a financial advisor, whether it's mentor, whatever it is. Once you sort of build up your tool set, you'll get better at handling these things. So um, there really is no magic wand, but other than repetition and practice. But here are some new stories that you guys can tell yourself. Growth only happens when you get out of your comfort zone. 
you can't grow if you're comfortable because it means you're actually not experiencing or trying anything new. So being uncomfortable is actually something that I really love now. I, I thrive on it. Um, if I'm feeling too comfortable at some point, then I ask myself, what do I need to be doing? Because something is, you know, it's too comfortable. If you are feeling scared as well, that means you're growing. Nothing worth having ever comes easy. And if it does come easy, then great. Um, but maybe you're not aiming high enough. Maybe you're capable of even more. So that's what I would get you guys to ask yourself. We have to go out there and take it. Something that I also see and you know, something I'll share with you guys is 99% of the opportunities that I have had throughout business um, that people have sort of asked me, how did I get this opportunity? I didn't sit around waiting for it to come to me. I went out there and took it myself. I said, what do I really want? How do I get there? And what does it take to make that happen? And I started and I went out there and got it. A lot of strategies, you know, people sort of come to me and say, you know, I haven't got a million customers overnight or I haven't grown my Instagram following fast enough or quick enough, but it's all about that consistency and consistently showing up and having all of your ducks in a row um, and showing up as the best version of you and your business. So that's why we're starting with mindset. You can tell yourself, I am capable, I am strong and I am powerful enough to go out there and do it. A lot of you have sort of said, I'm worried about, you know, people um, judging me or fear of success, you know, I am successful. You, you can tell yourself that because once you get into the mindset that you're already where you want to be, everything else kind of just follows. So if you start acting like you're already there, if you start manifesting all of that, it will start to come. The same with when people launch a business, they think, I'm just going to do a cheap iPhone photo shoot on my phone dull lighting, you know, blurry photos. And they think that'll do. And when I get more orders, then I'll invest in a photo shoot and great imagery. The thing is, do you think um, Maya or any massive, you know, brand is going out there and thinking that? I don't think so. So starting with that mindset, and that's something that I did is invest in great quality imagery. And that's how I was invited to New York Fashion Week after one week of running my business, because I'd set myself up to look like I could be beside these brands that I've looked up to for many, many years. I didn't just think, let me tinker a little bit and then I'll see how it goes. I started from day one with that mindset that I will be global business. I will be, you know, one of the best swimwear brands in Australia. You know, you've got to start there. And the first step is believing in yourself. The next thing I want to go into is remember It's not actually about you. All of these mindset blocks, they all come back to you. You're worried that people will think badly of you. You're worried that people might see you as a failure. You're actually not worried that you will fail. You're worried that others might see you as a failure or it might affect others around you. You know, every time you actually step up, every time you get out of that comfort zone, every time you face your fears, You're actually showing others that you can do it. They can do it too. When you take yourself out of it, it's not about you anymore. It's about how are you showing others that they can make this their reality as well. If you want more from your life, if you want more from your business, now, today, I'm glad you guys are joining me live because now is the time to make it happen. Now is the time to make this change. Now is the time to actually invest in yourself, commit to yourself and make that happen because until you take that first step, you can't take the second step and the third step and the fourth step and so much further on, you will be still back here at step one. So let's all take this step one together because if not today, then when is it going to be your reality that you take this next step? So actually figure out what are your key triggers? What are some key things that really get you um, uneasy or scared or putting up these barriers? Then the next step is to identify what those key things are and write your empowering statements. So that might be, I am confident, I am 
capable, I am successful, whatever those ones are for you. And I still use these. If something goes wrong and I, you know, it's out of my control because if it's in my control, I'm able to fix it. But if it's out of my control, that's one of my big triggers. When things are out of my control and things are going wrong, I will use these statements. And just by me saying these out loud with conviction to myself, it changes everything immediately. All of a sudden, I actually feel calmer. I have a solution um, to the problem and it just changes everything. I'm able to continue on with my day rather than dwelling on what's going wrong. So these are really, really powerful. Next, after you've got your statements, I want you guys to make this really real because if I just tell you to start chanting to yourself in your bedroom, um, a lot of people might just think I'm nuts and just think, good one, Jess, I'm not going to do that or I'm going to just say it in my head. Um, But I want you guys to really feel it and really have that conviction. So the motivating factors I want you to go through is if you don't do that, if you don't you know, overcome this mindset block, if you just sit there feeling frustrated or sit there dwelling on whether you should do something or whether you shouldn't, what impact is that going to have on your life, you know, for the rest of your life? If you don't make that change now, what impact could that have? Could that affect your relationships? Could that affect your business with your customers, um, with your family? Could that actually lead to the failure of your business? You know, there's so many different things um, that it could affect. So I want you guys to write that down because avoiding those things will motivate you more to actually implement. Um, And then 